All right, put a bit of bicarbonate in here. Totally not poison. All right. Hey, Kimberly. Yes? Look at this awesome orange juice. You want to try some? Oh my sure. God, are you doing that trick? Tastes great. Oops, sorry. What's wrong? This <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Welcome to the topic acids and bases. This is the first lesson, 8.1 theories of acids and bases, which will mainly go over Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. As you saw in the video clip, you may need to know some acid and base equations previous to this, and it'll be assumed knowledge. You can find these on the website I have, www.mrwang.weebly.com. You'll see here I've made up uh, a quiz where you can just grab the various products and put them into the right equation. Now there seems to be a small bug there with uh, the reaction that I actually used which was salt plus carbon dioxide and water as the products and you can see I would highlight the main ones uh, that commonly come up in the exam would be the carbonate plus the acid, the metal plus the acid and the acid plus the alkali. Although you will need to know all of those and some of those are revisited during the syllabus. Touching on nature of science now, as I started off with at the beginning, we started off with an acid, which beginning in the beginning with the Greeks, they classified these according to taste. So acids were sour, and it actually gives it a bit of taste. But once I've neutralized it, I'm left with salty, which doesn't make for a very nice orange juice. In 1777, Lavoisier burnt various compounds with oxygen that was soluble in water, and that gave a very sour taste. And so that's where we get the word oxygen from, oxy for sour and uh, born, so it's created. Uh, so that was the uh, idea of where acids came from, that they are actually just things that were burnt with oxygen. But later on, Davy found that there are other various compounds that didn't have oxygen in them and acted as acids. Now to get into the more thorough details of these theories, Arrhenius is what you probably have learnt before. Whereas if you just have the hydrogen pop off, that's an acid. Uh, and so if you have the hydroxide ion, uh, hydrogen ion pop off, or the hydroxide ion pop off, it's a base. Now, Bronsted Lowry is an improvement to this because his method is actually just as simply used, simply explained, but he can now include various other acids and bases, most notably the famous one that Ivy likes to use is here is ammonia. So if you now just call it an, a proton donor or a proton acceptor, that includes a much wider variety of acids and bases. Uh, finally, for high level only, we get to the Lewis, which is the most powerful one, uh, and that is just simply worked down to an electron pair uh, acid, acceptor, electron pair donor. Uh, and then it can now include um, exceptions and very strange cases like boron trifluoride. So here we see a progression based on Occam's razor, uh, the simplest with the most predictive power. Uh, now try and match up all those, all those terms and people that I've just mentioned and then see if you get that correct. Now we're just going over some specific examples of acids and bases. Acid's the one that's produced uh, hydrogen ions and base is the one that's produced hydroxide ions. Now just for your information, it reacts very readily with these lone electron pairs on the water. So technically they are hydronium ions that are produced. So the second one here, which is a little bit better at explaining, is the Bronston-Lowry acids and bases. So we have an acid is, is a proton donor, which is, is slightly similar, and an al, a, a Bronsted-Lowry base is a proton acceptor. So the H plus can join to it. 
A bronson lowry acid is a proton donor, a bronson lowry base is a proton acceptor. So here we see ammonium here has accepted the proton, ammonium has accepted the proton, so that makes this one the base. And here we see that we have a donor here, so that makes this water in this case the acid. Now we call those things there, this one is the base and then what it becomes here is now a conjugate acid because you can always work backwards and then that would now release the hydrogen ion. Same with here with the water being the acid, its uh, partner is called a conjugate base because it can now accept a proton if it goes in the opposite direction. So with this new bronsted lowry definition we now call ammonia a base and in this case we call ammonia uh, so water and acid. So here is an example of a conjugate pair with a carbonate ion and hydrocarbonate acid. This is monoprotic in this case but you also have diprotic going on as well before that. So this is the acid and the conjugate its conjugate base. So we should write conjugate there and that's the base and the conjugate acid. So in this case the water is actually acting as a base whereas in the previous one the water is acting as an acid. So this is called amphoteric. Uh, this is where you can act as either an acid or a base. A good example for you to know is aluminium oxide which is in the old syllabus because that's sort of the cutoff between metal oxides in water that form bases and non-metal oxides in water that form acids. Uh, and this is smack in the middle. Specifically protic the release or acceptance of protons. So a type of amphoteric substance is our amphoprotic substances, which is, which, which is just what we looked at now, the water. So here we can say here it's accepting a proton, so it's acting as, as an ex a proton acceptor, bronson lowry base with its conjugate acid, conjugate acid here, and vice versa here. So this would here be the acid with the conjugate acid with the conjugate base. So water is a type of amphoteric substance, specifically an amphiprotic. See if you can get this, question, this uh, little learning check correct and then we'll move on to the next lesson.